Welcome back to the future. I'm very excited to be here to talk to you about progressive web apps in Angular 2. I'm Ciro Nunes. You can find me on Twitter by Ciro Nunes Dev. So if you have any questions or you just want to say hi or may make fun of my accent, uh, just go there. I'm from Brazil and I'm living in Berlin. I'm one of the Google developer experts in Angular and web technologies. And I'm also the lead front-end engineer of CrossEngage, which is a startup from Berlin. And yes, progressive web apps. This is such a, a trending topic right now, right? If you take a look at the latest conferences like uh, Google I.O., Chrome Dev Summit, NGConf, Angular Connect, there's at least one talk about it. But what's really a progressive web app? Basically, uh, web applications, of course, websites that use progressive enhancement as the main directive to make mobile web apps that feels like native apps. So this whole idea of progressive enhancement is not a new thing. In fact, there's people talking about it since 2008. And by app-like, I mean something like this. You just open your application from your home screen, and you use it. There's no URL bar. There's nothing, right? So some aspects of progressive web apps that are worth mentioning are that they're discoverable, installable, responsive, engageable, uh, connectivity independent, linkable, and safe. By safe, I mean that they run under the HTTPS protocol, so they're safe. <laughs> and uh, the other aspects I will show during the presentation. So by discoverable, I mean you can Google it, like if you're going to the App Store or something like that, and then you find the application that you want to use, and you install it by adding it to your home screen, and then it's an app. You can open it, there's a nice splash screen, and you use it, right? This is possible thanks to the latest web technologies. So this slide was reserved just to give it some love. I don't know. But the question is how to build a progressive web app. There are basically three steps, and they're pretty easy. So walk you through. The first one is to create this file that looks like a JSON, but it's actually a web app extension file. And then you just declare some stuff like a name, some icons, and some colors. And then you have a very nice splash screen like this. Like this. Right? The second step is actually to build the app shell. What does that mean? I don't really like this kind of loading screen. It's not nice, right? So what we can do is actually show something meaningful for the user. So it feels like once the user opens the application, it's there. Like you really see something that you can possible, possibly interact with, like this app shell. And then the content is loaded dynamically inside the app shell. So to do that, you have basically two steps. The first one is to work that and implement the minimal HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for that. So this is an example for our app shell. We just have uh, some inline CSS, just the necessary to show this thing over there. And then we have also the minimal HTML. And this is all static. We can open that uh, menu just using CSS stuff. So we can inline that thing. And then once the user uh, goes to the URL of your application, it instantly loads, right? But we can do even better. We can actually cache this app shell using service workers. So when the user uh, re uh, com comes back to your application, it really loads instantly because it's cached, right? So that's how we do it. 
first thing, we just check if our browser supports service workers, and then we register a service worker file so that we can add some stuff to the cache. I would say don't pay too much attention to the code right now. I will share the slides later. I will tweet them so you can check it out. So let's try just to get the idea here. So what I'm doing is actually listening for the install event, and then uh, we add our static files to the cache. Our static files are declared here in this array. So we just put whatever you want to cache for your app shell, and that's pretty much it. So if you want to clear the cache, you can do something like that. As soon as your service work is activated, you uh, get the cache keys and actually delete from them. This is the cache API, one of the newest web technologies. So pretty cool stuff. And of course, you should also read from the cache, right? So uh, the fetch event actually represents any uh, network request. So we can intercept that through service workers. And of course, instead of going to the network, we just go to the cache and respond from there. So in uh, repeated vis visits to our application, it will load instantly. And to finish it, we can actually cache the content. So uh, besides the app shell, we also have the content uh, cached, which makes it even faster, right? So this code is pretty big, so let's break it down a bit. I'm actually just listening for the fetch event here again, and then I will check out if this request is uh, made from uh, our API URL. And if so, I will just add the result to the cache. So every time that I go to my API and get some content, I use service workers to put them in, in the cache. And this else statement is just uh, for the app shell. So we cached the app shell. If the request is not from our API, it's the app shell, so we just return it, right? This is actually nice because we're caching this stuff, but what if we don't have connection? We will play this very nice game. I really like it, but that's not what we want, right? We want to provide an offline experience. As I said, progressive web apps are connectivity independent. Right? So that's how we do it. In this way, we're actually not relying on the network. So if the user requests something, we use the cache first. In the other approach, we used uh, the network first. Right? So you can check the code later. But that's the idea. It's possible, service workers, and cache API. And that's it. Now we have a progressive web app. And you might be wondering, so can I do this with my existent apps? Definitely. It's up to you. And it's pretty easy. So what about a pro tip now? There's this thing called Lighthouse, used to audit your progressive web apps. It's uh, available under uh, Chrome extension, or uh, th there's also a CLI uh, application. So you can run it, and then it's going to give you some insights about your application. And stuff pretty useful, like time to interactive, for example. So you can really make sure that you provide a very nice and uh, app-like ex experience for your users. Well, this is an Angular conference. So let's talk a little bit about Angular now. How can Angular help us to build progressive web apps? I will talk about those four things. There's, of course, more. But let's focus on those. So when you're starting an uh, application from scratch, you should probably be thinking, well, let's use the Angular CLI, right? That's the easiest way and the recommended one. But uh, the mobile flag that was used for generating uh, PWAs 
is uh, disabled right now because the Angular core team is still figuring out uh, how to build it properly. So for now, you can rely on this repo from Alex of the core team, the mobile team. And, and yes, the, this is like the latest way of building progressive web apps. And I based my talk on this code. So you can go check it out. And if you want to start uh, an application now, I would definitely recommend you to uh, fork this repo or base your work on this. Cool. So Bootstrap is covered. Now, how to build the app shell? There's this project called Angular Mobile Toolkit. And this uh, provides a lot of uh, useful stuff for building the app shell and much more. I will show you about it. But first things first, to build the app shell, what we need to do is actually install this module. You can also use Yarn, not just NPM. And this will give you the app shell module, so you can just import it using ng modules. And you say that the app shell module will be available on runtime. And by doing this, you get access to those very nice directives, the shell render and shell no render. And this will uh, allow us to avoid maintaining a static version of our app to build the app shell. We can use this stuff in our app root component to say what is part of our app shell, shell render, and what is dynamic. Dynamic. What is not part of the app shell will be loaded dynamically. So this will be hidden when uh, the app shell is first uh, loaded. And as soon as the application is ready, it's going to be shown. But this still relies on uh, HTTP protocol. Like you do the request, you need to parse the JavaScript, and then you run. So how can we be faster? We can definitely do better than that. And there was a talk about universal uh, earlier today. So we can definitely use universal to actually server-side render our app shell so we deliver it even faster. And this is pretty easy to implement. You just need to do this. You already have the app shell. You import the universal mod module, and you start it with some configuration. You can check out the available properties in the universal documentation. But that's pretty much it. You just need to include universal and say to the app shell to pre-render. And you're done. It's pretty easy. What about the service worker? I show a lot of code about service workers, right? So now. All you need to do is install the service worker module, register a basic worker basic min.js, which is generated, actually not generated, but copied from uh, the Angular service worker module. So you don't need to do anything. The mobile toolkit already provides you uh, service worker so you have the offline experience uh, out of the box. And that's it. That's amazing, right? Actually, you just need to configure this JSON file. But that's it. You just declare the JSON file. You tell it about your routes, your in-try point, where are your assets located, and that's it. You have the full experience. That's great, right? I've talked about uh, re-engagement of the users. And by that, we mean notifications, right? This is the best way to get the user back to your application. You just show a notification, and the user will click there, and he's back to the application. So how to implement this? You, can, you definitely need the server side part, but as this is a 20 minutes talk, I skipped it. But you can check out the, the 
I'll, I'll actually tweet a link later so you can check out some examples of server-side code for this. But in our service workers, please notice that I created a new worker file here, this worker push. It's a separated one. I'm using the worker basic from the mobile toolkit, and I'm creating this one just to handle notifications. So I'm listening for the push event, and then uh, I do this request to my, to my server to, uh, to get the notification. I return it as a JSON, so then I can get this data and actually use this show notification method to show the notification in the screen. And that's pretty much it. So, now it's your turn. There's this gallery called Progressive Web Apps, and the, the URL is pwa.rocks. There are many examples, uh, like the AliExpress that I showed you. Flipkart is here as well. Did you know that Twitter is a progressive web app? You can try that out in your phone right now. You just open twitter.com, add it to your home screen, and you see the splash screen, all the stuff that I talked about, and it's pretty neat. So go ahead, check it out, uh, get inspired, and go create something great. That's all I have for you today. Thanks, guys.